the relativity of how many bars are in the groove that you're auditioning to what measure you're on in your DAW, that matters. Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. This is a tough video to decide to, to make because it's going to go over a lot of people's heads and a lot of people are just going to be like, I don't need to know anything this advanced. But the audition trick I've been teaching for a while now on my channel it's the fastest way to work an easy drummer to find beats in the grooves tab. You might be a bandmate type person, so that's a different workflow. If you only use bandmate, this isn't for you. But if you use the grooves tab to find beats and you use the audition trick that I've been showcasing in all my videos, links below if you want to see that in depth, then you've run into a, a slight sync problem. Not a slightly latency, things aren't syncing up problem, but when you play back a groove, from the search results area, it plays in time with your music, but not at the right time. You might be running into that. And that's what this video is about. It's hard to speak about it because it's a lot of math. So I'm just going to try and visually showcase it to you and we'll see if that works. Okay. You know, back in the day, I used to start my songs on measure two or measure three back in the day, the past 20 years since I've been in the digital realm uh, with DAWs. I would start my songs on measure two or measure three because I want to hear a measure or two of pre-roll with metronome before I start recording to my projects. But for the most part, when you do the audition trick, meaning you're playing music out of your DAW and playing beats out of the search results area, not your song track at the same time, that doesn't sync up perfectly. Nine, all right, 90%, this is going to work for 90% of you and you're more progressive players, not so much, but this is still good information to know. So you know what you're dealing with when you run into it. Most song structures are going to be at the minimum four, probably not usually eight measures long. I'll have an eight measure long intro. I'll have an eight measure long pre-chorus, you know, a 16 measure long verse, a 16 to 32 long measure long chorus, a 32 to 64 measure long bridge. Like everything is in these really round um, amount of bars per section of your song. 4, 8, 16, 32. When you sync Easy Drummer, any tune track product, by the way, I'm going to keep saying Easy Drummer because I'm using it. This is any tune track product. When you sync Easy Drummer to your host and you do the audition trick from your Grooves tab search results area, in order for this beat to play back at the exact right time, not sync, but at the right time, measure for measure, you need to be on the right measure in your DAW for that to work. That's why I start my songs on measure nine now, because I typically work with grooves that are either two, four, or eight measures long. That'll make sense in a moment, hopefully. So if I press play at measure nine and I press play on an eight bar groove, it will sync perfectly because I'm at measure nine in my DAW, eight measures in. This is an eight measure groove so it will sync perfectly. Where the playhead is up here, it is also down here and it will loop perfectly. Okay, let's watch it loop. This is about the loop, this is about the loop. Syncs perfectly, right? If I take this eight measure long riff and bring it back to measure five, and do the same thing, it will not work. It will work good enough to work, to continue working, but it will not work perfectly. Let's check out the behavior. I'm gonna put my playhead on measure five. Here we go. Check that out. My riff started at measure five, but my drum beat's about to loop already. My drum beat just looped. But my riff has not looped yet. They're four measures off. Let me hit undo. Oh, undo on my DAW. 
Now I'm back at measure 9. Let's try that again. I'll start playback from measure 9 and I'll play an 8 measure groove. Look at that. They're synced perfectly. So the relativity of how many bars are in the groove that you're auditioning to what measure you're on in your DAW, that matters. Again, if you're playing progressive music, like this is gonna get kind of messy quick and you'll have to use your imagination more when you audition grooves like this. But if you're writing like 90% of the rest of the population, you can probably get away with starting your song on measure five or measure nine and have a generally good experience with this. But if you're like I was for the past 20 years, starting your songs on measure two or three, this is gonna get out of whack pretty quick. Let's do that. Um, I typically, for a long time, I would start my, all my, actually, I never start my songs on measure two. I want two bars of pre-roll up front, measure one and measure two. And then I start my song on measure three. Now watch how this behavior is. Put the play in the right spot. Here we go. Look at that. It starts two measures in. This turnaround at the end of the bar right here, it's gonna be in a weird spot. About to loop an easy drummer. Loop, look, look where I am in this. It gets messy. There's an easy solution. If you don't understand that relativity I was trying to talk about, this is almost like, do you know music theory? Can we talk about an A minor chord? No? Well, let me just show you the shape of it instead. It depends. It, you can understand this or you can just take my word for the fix. It doesn't matter. I've tried to explain the theory behind this. And if that doesn't work for you, well, you can take my word that if you start your songs on measure nine, you're going to have a much better auditioning experience in Easy Drummer 3 because the majority of your song sections are going to be a minimum of eight measures long, and they'll be either eight or 16 measures long. Therefore, all your auditioning out of here is going to be pretty darn straightforward and be perfectly in sync all the time. The purpose is to the solution is to always start your songs on measure nine. And I get it. I don't want to bow down the tune track. I shouldn't have to do this. Well, you know, this isn't an error or anything like that. This is just a limitation. And if you're like me and superior drummer or easy drummer is the foundations of your songs, and it's really important to work as humanly fast as possible in them, this is going to get you your projects coming out faster. So, real quick, what if I audition measures that are, excuse me, grooves that are four measures long? I don't even know what this is, but. <laughs> it's gonna sound great. We're only looking at how this loops, not at the style of this. It's just kind of like, where is this come from? Groove five? Where'd you come from? Drum riffs. Yeah, sounds like a drum riff to me. Let me find that again. Here it is. So if I have a four measure riff, but I'm starting on measure nine, won't that be weird and out of sync too? No, it won't. The math works good the other way around. Let's try it out. I'm going to hit play on my DAW and then I'll hit play as fast as I can on this and we'll see where the playhead starts in this groove. Starts right at the beginning. <laughs> Let me half time this. And it's looping perfectly. So if I have an eight measure section and eight measure sections are the shortest sections of my entire song, I would start my song on measure nine and have a really good auditioning experience using the audition trick out of my search results area of my grooves tab, probably throughout my entire song, you know? So it's not going to work 100% of the time, but starting your song on measure 9 is going to make the majority of auditioning live out of your search results area much better throughout. Sometimes 
As you have a song section that's only four measures long, sometimes the playback will be a little bit off, but at least it will be off in an even manner. Unlike starting your song at measure two or measure three. So I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, you can take my word for it, or maybe, you know, you, just, you might not be ready for this yet either, because they, they call it Easy Drummer, but I'll tell you, I've, it's not really that easy at the, at the level I'm using it at. It's actually quite complex and amazing and efficient. I mean, this, this software is a machine when you start pushing it hard like I do, to the point where I start my songs on Measure 9 just to have a faster audition experience because I want to optimize my workflow. So I hope that helps. And if it doesn't, well, you know what? I've been meaning to want to explain this to people for a long time, and it's just not something that's easy to write out in a few sentences replying on social media or on YouTube, like, oh, just do this. Or like, start on Measure 9. What do you? I'm done with you. You know, here's the reason why. It's because the grooves out of your search results area on the grooves tab are relative depending on how long they are and what measure of your DAW you're on. What a pain in the ass. I hope that helped you out. And if not, just ignore this video and check out my other ones. Rock on, guys. Thank you. If you're playing 12 bar blues, start on measure 13 instead of measure 9. Right? And again, if... If you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't been curious about me saying the audition trick this whole video, go learn it. It is the most efficient way to find MIDI drum beats for your music in your DAW, hands down. Bandmate is a fantastic idea. I'm really excited about it. It's slow and turns back next to no results compared to your entire MIDI library. And that, and I speak, I'm speaking of Bandmate in version 3.0.6. I'm hoping Bandmate gets upgraded and turns into this monster, but it's nothing compared to the audition trick, okay? So if you're at a point with Easy Drummer where you're not a beginner anymore and you get into an intermediate level, follow me. Look at the links down there. Learn the audition trick. You'll be, it'll be the fastest writing experience you've ever had.